Good afternoon, welcome friends. As our brother Steve mentioned this afternoon, our topic for discussion is, why is heaven going not mentioned in the Bible? To answer this question today, we will be turning to the Bible quite regularly and we'll see what it tells us about this topic. Firstly, to help us answer this question, let's look at what happens when we die. Nearly all Christian denominations teach a heaven or hell afterlife. Essentially, they believe that every human being has an immortal soul that will go straight to heaven or hell after the physical body dies. What does the Bible teach about immortal souls? The term immortal souls never occurs in the Bible. In fact, it's quite the opposite. In Ezekiel 18, verse 1, God states that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. So this leads us to ask the question, what is the meaning of the word soul in the Bible? The, the word soul first occurs in the Bible's Old Testament in Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into its nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The Old Testament was written in the Hebrew language, and the term living soul is made up of two different Hebrew words. Living means, it's the Hebrew word che, which means alive. And soul, nephesh, which means a breathing creature. When we read living soul, it's, it's simply talking about a living, breathing creature. This is an accurate description of our current state. In fact, the same term is used in Genesis 1, verse 21, talking about whales and other creatures. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Here we see that there is no suggestion of immortality in the Hebrew words nephesh or che. Let's now look at some other examples of how the word soul is used in the Bible. The word soul or souls can also describe people like those who went with Abraham, Abram out of Haran in Genesis 12, verse 5. And Abraham took the souls that they had gotten in Haran and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. The word soul can describe animals as well as people. For example, number, Numbers 31, verse 28. And levy a tribute unto the Lord of men of war, which went out to battle, one soul of 500, both the persons and of the beeves and of the asses and of the sheep. Souls are spoken of in the Bible as being capable of hunger. We can see this from the following, following verses, Proverbs 19, verse 15. Slothfulness casts into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Lamentations 1, verse 11. All her people sigh, they seek bread, and they, they have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. After looking and reading these quotes, we understand that souls are simply living, breathing creatures. Well, although the word soul occurs 700 times in the Old Testament and 180 times in the New Testament, it is never spoken of as being immortal or immaterial. Living souls like us are not only capable of death, but are naturally prone to it. That's why we read the words in Psalms 22, verse 29. No one can keep alive his own soul. 
Psalm 89, verse 48. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? There are many ideas about what heaven would be like and who will, be, and who will go to heaven. We see them all the time in movies and on TV and read about them in books and cartoons. But do these ideas about heaven come from the Bible? The Bible teaches very clearly that all human beings die. Hebrews 9, 27, and as appointed for men to die once. Since we are all human, death awaits us all. What happens to death, what happens after death, is one of the most important questions that we could ask ourselves and answer. The short answer to this question is that the Bible says we literally die after death. We don't go to heaven or hell or maintain any conscious state. Dead people sleep in unconsciousness. They don't think or feel anything. But the good news is that for those that believe and are baptised, the sleep of death is not permanent. The Bible teaches that there will be a resurrection or a restoration of life in a future time. Let's now explore this answer in greater depth also using the Bible. When the Bible describes death, it often likens it to sleep. Job 3, verse 11 and 13. Why did I not die at birth? Why did I not perish when I came from the womb? For now I would have lain still and been quiet. I would have been asleep. Then I would have been at rest. Job 14, verse 12. So man lies, so man lies down and does not rise till the heavens are no more. They will not awake nor be roused from their sleep. Psalm 6, verse 5. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? Psalm 13, verse 3. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Psalm 146, verse 4. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Finally, Daniel 12, verse 2. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. These verses are very clear that the Bible likens death to sleep. Death is like sleep in that no conscious thoughts occur when someone has died. People who are dead are completely unconscious, unaware of the passing of time and without any feelings or awareness of themselves or their surroundings. The following verses continue to show this state of unconsciousness. The verses we read of this afternoon, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. Verse 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. When someone falls asleep, they will eventually wake up. We as Christadelphians believe that when someone dies, they experience the sleep of death for a period of time, but will awaken in the future. The Bible calls this the resurrection of the dead. The Bible verses we have quoted this afternoon make it clear that when a person dies, he or she is unconscious. Death is like a sleep, but many people believe that good people will go to heaven when they die. In fact, thousands of years, every year, thousands of people will ask the question, will I go to heaven? The verses we quoted earlier 
answer this question indirectly. Together, they tell us about the mental state of the dead and use an analogy of sleep that doesn't match the common idea about going to heaven. There is no scripture that says we'll go to heaven when we die. In fact, Jesus, who would be the highest authority we could turn to on this topic, said in John 3 verse 13, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. The apostle Peter reinforced Jesus's teaching when he delivered, which he delivered seven weeks after Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Acts 2 verse 29, men and brethren, let me, be, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. For David did not ascend into the heavens. As we have learned, people who have died do not go to heaven. They are sleeping or resting in the graves. But as we have already mentioned, that sleep isn't permanent. The Bible contains the good news that God will wake them up in a resurrection from the dead. We as Christadelphians believe that that will occur at the return of Jesus. The Apostle Paul makes this clear in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 16. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep or dead. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. When Jesus returns, as the Apostle Paul stated, the dead in Christ will rise first. For someone to rise, they would have to come up from somewhere. If someone had died and gone to heaven already, then that individual wouldn't be rising from the grave when Jesus returns. They would be descending from heaven. Paul is clear that the dead wake up from their sleep and rise. The Bible is full of verses speaking about the resurrection of the dead. Jesus speaking in John 6 verses 39 to 40. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should, write, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son of Man and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Again, Jesus speaking in John 5 verses 28. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which, that, in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. The Apostle Paul, writing in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Samuel's mother, Hannah, in one of her prayers in 1 Samuel 2, the Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. And Isaiah prophesying in Isaiah 26, your dead shall live, together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. We all will eventually die, but when Jesus returns to the earth, the responsible followers who have come to a knowledge of Jesus and who have died will be raised from the graves and given an opportunity at eternal life. But how do we become part of this opportunity? We need to believe in the gospel and the things concerning the kingdom of God 
and the name of Jesus and to be baptised. This means that we must be able to understand the things that are being preached. And once we have come to an understanding of these things, we must be baptised. Acts 8 verse 12 is a helpful verse here because it tells us that the Samaritans, preached to by Philip, believe the things, notice it's plural, concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptised both men and women. It is not enough to make just a simple statement like, I believe in Jesus. It involves knowing and understanding a series of doctrines. Jesus preached about the kingdom of God in Luke 9 verse 11. And the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God, and healed them that had need of healing. And also about many things in Mark 6 verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion towards them, because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Notice here again that it's plural. The suggestion is that the gospel contains many things and an understanding of them is necessary for baptism. In Acts 2 verse 37, Peter asks the question, what shall we do to be saved? And his answer is in the following verse, to repent and be baptised for the remission of sins. Baptism into Jesus' name is for the forgiveness of our sins, because without it there can be none. This means that those who are not baptised receive the wages of sin, which means death, as Romans 6 verse 23 puts it. Jesus' resurrection was a sign of his personal triumph over sin. By baptism, we associate ourselves with Jesus' death and resurrection, and when we are baptised, we are made free from sin, as Romans 14 says. As much as we try, we continue to sin after baptism. 1 John 1, verse 8 and 9, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us all from unrighteousness. This means that those who are baptised are sharing in Jesus' death and our baptism demonstrates how we are associated with his resurrection. It is this resurrection to eternal life that we hope to share at his return. But ultimate salvation does not come straight after baptism, as but at the judgment seat when Jesus returns. Baptism isn't an instant access to salvation. And I'm sure that one of the many things preached by Jesus would have been about the judgment. And he says in Matthew 10, verse 23, that he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So the act of baptism alone doesn't guarantee our salvation. By being in Christ, we have the hope of being in God's kingdom only if we continue to be as Christ-like as possible from the moment of our baptism onwards. John 3 verse 5, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So to summarise and to slightly rephrase our original question, do we go to heaven when we die? The Bible answers this question very clearly in saying no. Only Jesus has gone to heaven and humans don't go to heaven or hell at death. While it may be comforting to those coping with the death of a loved one to think of them as looking down from heaven, this belief is not supported by the Bible. But that doesn't mean that all hope is lost when someone dies. The Bible reveals an encouraging hope that through belief in the gospel and through baptism, the responsible dead will be resurrected at a future time after Jesus has returned. 
This afternoon, we have just skimmed the surface on a very large topic. To learn more about what the Bible says will happen after we die, we invite you to visit the website listed on the screen or to contact us at the email address with any questions.